Welcome to another episode of Business Gist. My name is Tosin Amatao, CEO of Amatao CPA. This week, we're going to be listening to an interview that I was invited for by Lindsay Klein. She's the owner and CEO of Sackline Bookkeeping. Hope you enjoy. Thanks for joining us, everyone. This is Lindsay Klein with Sackline Honest Accurate Bookkeeping, performed on time and your host of By the Books. I have with me an awesome guest today. Right. Let's see if I can not butcher his name. <laughs> I practiced a few times here. Let's see if I can do this. Let's do it. Tosin Amatayo. Yes. Now, I so know I you, said that slowly. You but gotta say it fast Tosin, and confident. <laughs> okay, Tosin Amatayo. Yes, there you okay. go. Okay, all right. I was so nervous about butchering that, but <laughs> Tosin Amatayo is with me. He is the CEO and managing partner of Amatayo CPA. That's right. Okay. Did job, I say that confidently? Yes, you did. Okay. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> Thank you for having me. You and I met at a CPA study group lunch. That's right. And I remember being very impressed in that lunch talking with you. You were one of those people that immediately I was like, oh, I need to get him on the podcast. I talk too much, <laughs> although I'm introverted. <laughs> but you had some great things to say. It, yeah. it was, you're one of those people I can tell where when you speak... People need to listen. You've got I, good things to say. Well, so I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate that. So I, I was very impressed. And it seemed like you're a little bit out of the box in the sense that, let's just say, generally speaking, a lot of CPAs tend to be on the conservative end. And mm -hmm. it seems like you're more willing to take some risks and a little bit more on the um, the risky side <laughs> in a good way. Hopefully. Because I like that. I, I'm always looking for that. Someone that's, you know, not just so risk adverse that they get into analysis paralysis, if you Definitely. will. Definitely. So I, I observed that about you. Is that an accurate statement? I think it is. And it's because what I tell a lot of uh, new clients that come on board with us is that I'm not just a CPA. I'm also an entrepreneur. You know, me and my family, we've got real estate investments, mm. different business investments, whether it's in IT, consulting, um, all kinds of different things, right? So I get to sit on both sides of the table and therefore I, I not only am able to process things like a CPA, but also, you know, twist that hat around and then put my entrepreneur hat on and really understand what is the client mm. trying to accomplish? What are they trying to do? So therefore, we take that holistic view of, hey, you know what? Most CPAs are, are focused on historical work for the client, meaning last year's taxes, last week's payroll, last month's sales tax, last name it, mm -hmm. name it and claim mm -hmm. it, all right? Yeah. They're always focused on that, but no one's ever taking all that data and saying, hey, you know what? When you're trying to grow and scale your business, you know, if you're trying to get financing, for example, banks are looking two to three years in the past. Well, how can I prepare myself today to be able to accomplish yeah. what I'm trying to do two, two to three years in the future? Absolutely. Right. So therefore, you know, you have to kind of go against the grain when it comes to traditional thinking such as I mean I'm sure we'll talk about some of these things but you know one one of my pet peeves is people just say write off write off write off write off write off write off <laughs> I'm like well if you write off everything under the sun and you don't show that you're making money how are you going to get that financing right. to be able to either buy that building or get financing to buy equipment or whatever it right. is right so you it may not be in your best interest to write everything it off it usually isn't especially if you're trying to scale yeah right makes sense yeah so um we have to think about it differently and sometimes um not everybody's a good fit because of that because you want to just do the traditional thinking rather than you know let's let's game plan two to right. three years and also be proactive right right well i had a episode i did a while back where i talk about the question i asked i don't know like maybe 20 cpas the same question just to see what is the plethora of answers that I would get? Okay. And so one thing that became glaringly obvious to me was there is definitely a spectrum in risk aversion, <laughs> you know, to highly conservative versus, you know, more risky, willing to take risks and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and so that was very glaringly obvious to me when I kept asking the same question and getting all these different answers. And, and, it, and it caused me to realize, OK, that is one area of compatibility when you're looking for a tax plan or tax professional to help you making sure that your risk level is aligned 
seems to be really important because if you are on one end saying, you know, let's let's not put these deductions in because of lending, and then the, the person that's on the other side of the table from you has a different objective, yes. it then it, there's a mismatch, you know, right. a mis a not not compatible, if you will. And always, um, when it comes to that risk level, we always have to manage our risks. There's nothing that you can do that will guarantee that the IRS will never audit you right, or something right. will never happen. No, there isn't, right? But what kind of structure do you have? What kind of supporting documents do you have? Because sometimes what is another person's risk is really just documentation mm. for another person. Yep. You know, an example is people that, you know, want to write off their miles on their tr on their cars, right? Well, if you have a mileage app and you're tracking every single business movement on that mileage track, you can write off a million miles if you want. Right. It's not risky to me. You've got the supporting documentation. But if you just walk in and say, oh, I drove a million miles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah you know, that is risky. Right, so right. I do supporting document right. risky, you know, while some people may do, you know, just right. put it, name it right. and claim it right. risky. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. Right. And of course, us at <laughs> Sucline so Bookkeeping, we are big on the documentation. Yeah. We are a huge And we'll tell you how fan. to do it, right? You Absolutely. Know, it, we'll tell you the right way. Maybe there are other tools, like I said, maybe it's software that helps you yes. get to that supporting document, you know, rather than have you having to do a manual log. One of the misnomers I often hear uh, from business owners or others that will tell me, well, it's on my credit card statement, Ooh. so that's all I need. And I've had people adamantly argue with me about this and even though i've had people guests on this podcast that are cpas saying i have been across the table from the irs trying to get them to accept rent expense <laughs> deductions which were the same every month being paid to the same the vendor person. that yeah, owned the yeah. building mm -hmm. and they wouldn't accept it because we didn't have a receipt so if you're thinking that you're safe just because it's cleared your credit card and on your credit card statement, you are not. <laughs> Here's an example I usually give to people. Let's say you go to Walmart, you spend it on your business credit card and hey, IRS, I've got it on my credit card. Yeah. It's Walmart. Right. Well, do they know if you went to buy bananas for the house or right. you went to buy a printer? Right. Or you went to buy some wine? Right. You know, or you... What did you spend on inside Walmart? There's so many things in that place, or let's even use, again, Amazon. Mm -hmm. Did you buy a, a gift for somebody, or did you buy right. you know, stamps or you right. know, envelopes right. for the office? Right. We don't know. How do you expect them to know? Right. Right. So that's where the supporting documentation comes. It's not that they don't take your bank statements because, yes, they do. I think some, something like force the banks to give you uh, mm. to give them all of their bank statements. Right. Uh, but they want to see why you went there right. and what you spent on. So that itemized supporting documentation is really important. Absolutely. And yes. even with restaurants, um, yeah. I even with my business partner the other day, he was only keeping the credit card portion of yeah. your seat that doesn't have anything itemized. And I was like, oh, no, that's not the one you want to keep. You no. want to keep the one that lists everything out. Yes, you signed that yeah. one and it may right. look important, but right. the itemized one right. is important. Is what they're going to yes. actually care about. Yes. Yeah. So you're absolutely right. And I'm on board with you 100 percent. If I could paraphrase, because I'm sure I won't say it exactly the way you did, but good tax planning and tax preparation starts with good accounting. That's right. That's right. That's and of like course, we agree 100%. That's, that's what we do. That's the foundation. You know, we have kind of a, a roadmap for onboarding new clients because most of them require some kind of training in working with us. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's all about that structure. Right. So number one is if you're going to do business, register a business. All right. If, if it's going to be a hobby, no problem. You know, do hobby. Right. But if you're saying, hey, I have a business, well, register a business. Right. right. Formalize it. Right. Right. Then number two, get a business bank account, get a business credit card. We're not 
not saying carry credit card balances and all that stuff but it's really because many people enjoy the benefits that come with certain credit cards whether it's you know cash rewards travel rewards mm -hmm. and all that stuff so i tell them hey you know what don't feel like just because you have a business now and you can't use that credit card because Dosen's telling me you know use only the business for business i right? will say that <laughs> i say that to clients all right. day keep so, it separated de definitely <laughs> so what i tell them is you know what get it most of these credit cards have a business version right right so if you enjoy that cash rewards i'm sure that exact same credit card or mostly sure has a business version right that you can use right right so get that and then keep enjoying the same benefits right right so that's why we highly recommend business credit cards and also it's also for cash flow purposes if you're starting a new business you might not have enough cash in there so when you're at the store or trying to make that purchase and there's no money in the business checking you will end up using your personal all right and then it's like oh it's just one time it's just mm, this yeah, time right yeah, it's just yeah. this time well, just this time, just that time, that next time, no. All right, you're gonna lose out. Um, so therefore it's important to have that business credit card, business checking account. The next up is gonna be accounting. We have different levels of accounting that we'll train people or maybe recommend them to have, right? There are free tools out there that can help you with your accounting. It shouldn't be, even there's Excel, like it will show you if you're an Excel pro and you love all those V lookups <laughs> and you know, pivot tables and all that, we'll show you how to do accounting mm -hmm. in Excel if that's your jam, right? But there should not be any reason why a business owner should not, at least a small business owner that has a little bit of time that they can't do their their accounting on their own right that's level one of business that for most business owners that i talk to there's two big issues number one it's overwhelming with all the many things that they already have to do for their business mm -hmm. it's one more thing that becomes yeah overwhelming yes. and i can understand that yeah. completely i don't even do my own bookkeeping like my <laughs> team does the bookkeeping for my business so i understand like i if i had to do it myself it would be a huge Huge bottleneck because yep. I have so many other responsibilities things going on yeah. so I can understand that and then I think the other thing is, is if somebody doesn't have a background in it it's overwhelming just to know where do I start or how do I do it you know because it's it's something that they're not real familiar with most of the time mm -hmm. so it's it's sort of compiles on both of those and then it's just something you want to avoid because it's overwhelming in a multitude of ways and so it's just easier to avoid it and, yeah. I, and that's when we get these calls from people that say my tax extension is due next month and i need all of last year done <laughs> and, and to me when i hear that yes it's it's i get alarmed because it tells me that you were running your business without man like managing your business mm. like how do you uh um how do you run your business without knowing your numbers yeah. as they say right so therefore it now it, it starts to make me think are you building a job or are you building a business mm. right if you're oh this is this will take us on a whole nother chance <laughs> maybe we should save it but you know there there's definitely a difference between building a job and building yeah. a business yeah and those that want to build a business you know having making the time if you can't afford for somebody else to do your accounting is important or having that infrastructure there where your accounting is done you're reviewing your financials you know your performance month over month year over year quarter over quarter whatever it is so that you can at least um, know the strategic opportunities within your business mm -hmm. and what you can do to scale it yeah that's right. good i try to remind clients and other business owners i talk to that you're building an asset or you could be yeah maybe you're not now but <laughs> you could be it's it's not just as you said a job yeah um but a lot of people do turn it into that and oftentimes it's it's kind of a hobby or a side hustle that then becomes a full-time job yeah and people often don't think of it as being an asset but it absolutely can be it can be it can be something that you could sell one day that and is definite. profit from 
greatly. I love that. I love but that. not if it's not run well, not if you don't have good financials. You can't sell or, a job. Right, right. exactly. You can't sell a job. Right, right. And <laughs> somebody getting, working yeah. anywhere for somebody, you right. can't say, hey, here's my job. Right. You know, pay me to, to right. buy it. No, but you can sell a business. Absolutely. Yes, you can sell that asset. Definitely. I had a great advice from Kurt Coyne. He actually came on this podcast in the very beginning days of it. And um, this was when I had first quit my full-time job to do this full-time. He told me, start with the end in mind. That's right. And that was some of the best advice I've gotten in business to this day, because I really took that to heart and made a very concerted effort never to get myself in the weeds. Cause yeah. I realized yeah. if I'm doing all the work, I have a very low ceiling to grow. Yeah. So I am so glad he told me that. We, we don't have enough bandwidth individually to be right. able to do everything. Right. Although many of us entrepreneurs will be wearing multiple hats. Yes. You know, from the person that's opening up the door in the morning to the person that's locking up at night to yes. the person that's cleaning to the person that's selling to the person that's whatever, whatever. Right. It's a lot. Yeah. Yes. So from a business owner's perspective, that's maybe just getting started or, you know, cash flow isn't yet just gangbusters and they're looking at this to go okay i don't really know how to do this myself but i can't really afford yeah to hire someone to do this for me what would you suggest for a person in that situation That's what we call our level one accounting right because many most business owners spend the same way most months right all the accounting that i've done and i'm guessing you probably can say the same thing most people spend the same way every single month. Mm. Let's say if you had a Adobe subscription, right. it's going to show up every single right. month. Right. All right. Once I teach you how to code Adobe this month, when you see it next month, you, you know how to do it. You know how to do it. Or you can set up a system that automatically posts it for you. Yeah. There are just a few of those transactions. And let's just generalize and say maybe 20% of your transactions are kind of different or they're not codable easily maybe like a check you wrote a check well you got to open up the check and see what the check was for and so on and so forth before you know how to code it right so it's not something you can easily automate mm -hmm. right so if you can do 80 percent well the remaining 20 percent will help you figure it out so we recommend first things first like we mentioned spend only from your business uh checking account or credit card income and expenses need to flow through there yeah and that makes it so much easier because then Correct. you know everything that's flowing through this account yeah. is a business expense and everything flowing through your personal account it's is personal, personal and you don't need to worry about right. it not that you have to juggle in between okay this is a personal expense okay let me put it to a right. draw let me do that like and by you the way, don't need to be <laughs> for anyone listening that's in that situation, just know if you hire someone now, that person has to weed through both of your personal and they and will be business. asking you. Right. They'll be asking you and charging a lot more because it's taking so much time. That's it. That's it. So that's why that structure is very important. Yes. That is the number one way to do your own accounting is by simplifying how, what is being recorded and using your bank as that ledger, that's kind of ledger of record to then we take that and mimic that into an accounting system where we can now code it into the different categories, whether it's income, whether it's rent, whether it's supplies and so on and so forth. Well, because we already have it on one ledger, it's easier for us to copy it into a next ledger. W one of the level one tools that we have, like I mentioned, is Excel. Well, most banks, when you're in the screen that shows you all the transactions, the date, the description, and the amount, there's usually a download button there. You can download that and export all those transactions into Excel. Now, you don't need to be an Excel guru, but I'll give you quick tips, all right, that I can even say without writing, right? Create a column after you've exported it to Excel, create a column, call it category, and then just go through each transaction. If you see rent, put rent. If you see income, put income. If you see supplies, put supplies. Go all the way down and that's it. That's really how accounting is done, right? Now all these software and everything like that, they'll make it a little bit fancy because from there, they can take all of that, what you just did in Excel, and create a profit and loss and a balance sheet and a cash flow statement and a year over year comparison and so on and so forth. But basically that's what they are doing. That's what they are all doing, 
right? It's taking each line in your bank statement and figuring out what do we categorize it as. Yeah. Now I will say there we'll put a little asterisk there. There <laughs> are more complicated transactions Correct. that the average business owner would not be able to book. Now themselves. this is for this is for startups, right? This is basically if you need to communicate to somebody what your expenses were or your income, yeah. you know, having something to communicate that to them. But obviously, if you had, for example, a real estate sale, yeah, that's a complicated then transaction. There's a, whole more, there's a whole lot more yeah. to it. Anything Correct. that's dealing with depreciation, obviously, Correct. buying or selling, that's a more complicated transaction. And that's that, where you go to the different levels, right? right? You're not just going to be at level right. one anymore right. and probably shouldn't handle it yourself. At right. That point right. if you have that much complexity you know make sure you sell enough to be able to afford a good bookkeeper or CPA, yeah, yeah. right <laughs> let me know if you need help with that anyone That's right. <laughs> right um or if you're if you're not really an excel fan there are also other free tools online that can do the same thing like a lot of these popular software have you they connect to your bank account They'll pull it in there and you just go in there and categorize each transaction. Now, again, if the transactions do get complicated, you will need a little bit of help on that. But majority of people probably won't have that complexity. Mm -hmm. It's just time to be able to complete it. Right. And it's easier if you complete something monthly rather than at the end of the Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Or maybe even do it weekly if Absolutely. possible. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And I understand that, like, I understand the that intellectually it is better to do something a little bit each week right yeah. than wait but i also understand the mentality that most of us have that if it's not something we want to do Correct. we're gonna put it off as long as possible so <laughs> well that's where it comes that's where the question comes back in am i trying to build a business or am mm -hmm. i trying to build a job if i'm yeah. trying to build a business it has to be built with a foundation that can scale right so those tasks, those important pieces in my business, you have to list them all out and who's going to help you accomplish it. Mm. And many people, whenever they are looking at their business and strategizing or creating some kind of business plan, they always forget accounting. Why do we always get forgotten about? Tell me. Mm, I don't know. I think it's because we are all <laughs> overhead and we never have good news. <laughs> 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 Probably, right? We're not helping them make money, but we could, though. We well, could, though, yeah. right? with the right information, right. right? You can help a business owner grow, right? Absolutely. So I guess maybe let's let's say perspective. It's all about that perspective. Yes. Are you thinking of it as a as a cost or something that can or yeah, or part of your development team? Here's a question for you: for people that maybe know that but they don't know accounting enough to know what questions to ask to know if this person actually knows their stuff, how would they go about knowing whether a professional is good or not? I was gonna ask you that question. <laughs> Because I'm biased, right? I'm a CPA, you know, I expect, I would expect, I mean, I have a high threshold for anyone that calls themselves a CPA. You've got to be awesome. Mm. All right. Um, we may be a little overworked, you know, <laughs> at, at deadlines. We don't want to talk to anybody, you know, yeah. but you, yeah. know, you should be doing a good job because of, you know, that standing that you have in the public. Well, so I've right. gotten to know some things because as bookkeepers, there's things that we look for on our end that make our job easier. Yeah. And so there are things that I will ask CPAs to see if it's someone we might recommend because we don't do any taxes. Mm -hmm. So we need good tax professionals to recommend for our clients. Um, so I'm our, always scouting for that. And um, one of the things that I ask that I have found to be not only a good question in terms of is this going to be helpful to us? But also I've found it's a good measure of how thorough are they? Mm. And so the question I will ask is, do you always include a balance sheet in every business tax return or only oh, when it's required? I love it. I love it. I love yeah. it. You should ask so, some of my staff. I was, was going to ask, what do you do on your team? We are definitely going to be adding every single balance sheet, but we might not show it. So you may not put it in the tax return. And if I had no, to guess. No, it's in our tax return tax software, return? Okay. but it won't produce on the final okay. PDF. Okay. Right? So if I had to guess, the, your reason for that is that it's not always advantageous for you to show that for lending purposes or other reasons? Yeah, for other okay. reasons, correct. 
but we are going to make sure that our balance sheet, our M1, our M2s, our basis is always going to match and add up. Gotcha. Always. So you always have it. It just may not show up on the tax yeah, return. It may not show up. Okay. But one thing, if I'm reviewing a tax return that one of my staff men, uh, prepared, you know, because we have tax managers that kind of handle that whole process. But if I'm to look at it, those are my first go-tos. Mm. Like, where's your balance sheet? Where's your M1? Where's your M2? Where's your basis? Where's your financial statements? Do they all match? And I don't really need to look at the details too much because if the ending totals match, I mean, this is a, me as a reviewer and someone that has about five minutes to review your tax mm -hmm. return. I just want to make sure that everything matches up. Yes. Right. It yes. should be from the financial statements. Absolutely. Actually, sorry. We start from the prior year tax returns to the beginning numbers on your tax return to the financial to the current year financials. I love this. To the ending. You are um, oh. blessing my heart right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds it, it, like you're a good one to send business to. Uh, oh Lord. <laughs> no. We're a little tough. We're a little tough because we don't take shoe boxes of receipts. Oh, from I, anybody. I understand. Right. I understand that. And um, that's why we are I'm I, I call myself the chief consultant or chief educator right because a lot of times we've got to break down all the bad habits that people have learned or maybe that they've gotten away with right because mm -hmm. there's what's technically right and what I've gotten away with and a lot of times you hear more of the people that speak loud about mm -hmm. what I've gotten away with mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so we want to make sure that they come in and they understand our process yes we're gonna be different yes our goal is not to save you on taxes. I think that's something new I've started saving, saying. We don't save anybody on taxes. Taxes is a, it's just a collation of all the events that happen throughout the year, right? That's that's all it is really. I'm not trying to save you on money, it's, it's a result. Taxes are a result of your income. However, throughout the year, there may be strategies that we can implement based on your business mm -hmm. to be able to create business expenses. I hate that word tax, de tax deductions. Uh -huh. So to create business expenses that will now reduce your net. And then when it flows into whether it's a corporate or, you know, it's a pass through and it flows to your personal and the tax is calculated, it calculates at a lower amount because your net is lower mm -hmm. than what it originally would have been. So we're not saving you on taxes. We're just structuring your business so that we can capture properly all the things that happened. And instead of you spending, oh, you bought a van for your company, but it's under your personal name, you're paying for it under your personal account. So therefore you're forgetting to write it off, but you use it hundred percent of the time to do deliveries for your business. Why isn't it on your business account? You know, that's why we're talking about this topic. Now you'll say, oh, Tosin, find me some expenses, find me some tax savings, save me on taxes. Well, you missed out on this because you didn't structure your business properly. Mm. It's not me try saving you on taxes. You need to be structured up front so that you can fully maximize the built in advantages of, of being a business owner. Well, and that shines a spotlight on the difference between tax preparation and tax planning. Correct. That planning portion is forward looking, whereas the preparation is backward looking. Yes. And once the year is over, there's a limited amount of things you can do at that point. Yeah. So that planning, do you plan in your, because this is another good question for people to ask to determine, is this the right professional? Do they plan, do you guys in your firm, do you plan with your clients prior to the year ending? We plan with the people that can afford to. Gotcha. Because a lot of people, if you're coming to us in September to do your taxes or to actually finalize your taxes, we're still dealing with the prior year three quarters of the way in this year right right so what are we planning for like now we're we're still firefighting right so i still don't call that planning those that we want to plan for the right type of people that have the planning mindset it's done at least on a quarterly basis mm. So if we're if we're talking about, oh, let's think about tax planning in the fourth quarter, we've missed three quarters of things that you should have structured properly so that we can capture mm -hmm. it so that by the end of the year, we don't have to be running around and say, oh, where'd you where'd you spend all this money for? No, 
but having that mentality that you would prefer i assume to yes. do it that way yes. rather than the cpa that really doesn't even want to talk to you <laughs> that's obviously a good a good sign yeah. so that's definitely something people could ask and even in general customer service which is certainly Correct. something that at our bookkeeping firm we're concerned with because we've had a plethora of clients that have complained to us about their tax professionals in that they can't get a hold of them they won't answer the phone they won't answer emails so well, that's another question yeah so instead of um dodging the question like i did let me give you a few points that i look for okay. in a good cpa okay number one is going to be it's it doesn't mean that you're good or not right but is it to me my first question is do you have a team ah or are you a solopreneur? Yeah, be, there's nothing wrong with either, but um, bandwidth is mm -hmm. going to be an issue. Absolutely. No one can work. I mean, yes, <laughs> a lot of CPAs put in many, many hours over the course of the year, right? But there's only so much you can do efficiently with those hours, right? right? And if you're not getting called back, if you're not getting texted back um, on time or on a timely basis or at all, right? probably because they're a little overwhelmed yeah right doesn't mean that they are bad it's more that they are overwhelmed yeah right and therefore having a team is the first step into being able to take on a little bit more so if you're looking for a cpa i wouldn't look for just price i would look for somebody that has a little bit of availability yes absolutely and maybe even drilling down with them on what are your future plans are you going to continue to grow are you closing in non retirement what's you know what are the next few years going to look like for you correct it's like that mindset of a doctor right you don't want to be changing your primary care doctor every single year right, right. you want somebody that knows you knows that about that backache that you had two years ago <laughs> about the broken knee that you had and oh, yeah. so on and so forth you want that kind of history with them so but yes we know we have medical records that can pass from one person mm -hmm. to the next but they really they just see documents right. they don't have context right if you're switching doctors from year to year to year to year they don't have that constant text or that relationship with right you. Right. So I agree. They, they, they might not know that you just love to run, but yes, you do have knee pain. But so instead of telling me not to run, maybe it's get me better shoes. Mm. Right. You need to buy some more expensive shoes. Mm. Right. If you love to run so that it can support your knee or maybe run on a treadmill. Right. But if you, I came to a doctor, which is documents saying that this person always has knee pain, they had knee surgery and so on. Yeah. You need to stop running. That's what I would recommend mm. because that's what I easily see without having that contact. Right. Same thing as a CPA, right? You want to be able to have that long-term relationship with them. You tell them where you're planning to go three to five years. Mm -hmm. And I always, every new client, at least if I remember, I tell them, hey, as, as I'm helping you build, you do look out for me. I'm trying to scale. I have people. Yeah. All right. My basic and don't tell them this. All right. I'm looking straight into the camera. Don't <laughs> don't tell my staff this. All right. But my base rule is if you can do it 80 percent as good as I can do it. I mean, like, I just got to let it go. Mm. All right. I'm just going to have a heart attack if I try and expect 100 percent from yeah. every single person. So I've got to give a little bit of wiggle room, but don't tell them. All right. <laughs> So I tell the new clients, I'm like, hey, look out because this is my rule and, you know, none of us are perfect. Mm. Yes, I've got MBAs, CPAs, EAs that are on staff with us and they're going to be handling you because I'm just chief consultant and chief educator here. Right. But if they don't do a good job, let me know. We'll, we'll work it out. All right. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah. fix them. Nobody's perfect. All right. So first things first is going to be do they have that bandwidth to take you on yeah. in the way you want to be taken care of? Um, I, I, ha I always have all these thoughts come into my head um, and I call it the dilemma of scale. I know we're just on point number one, <laughs> <laughs> all right. but it's the dilemma of scale. I'll just give a little bit about it. It's, it's where, you know, you as a business owner, you want to grow your business. But then you come to a business owner, to another business owner, whether it's a doctor, whether it's an attorney, whether it's a CPA, a professional, but you don't want them to scale cycle or at the back of your mind because you expect them to do everything for you. 
So how can one person scale if you expect to talk to that same person mm. every single time? So you're stopping somebody else from scaling, but you want them to help you scale. There's a dilemma there, you know. Mm. So that makes sense. you've got to train these clients that are coming on board. This is now for the CPAs and bookkeepers, tax preparers out there that this is what we are planning on doing. Mm. You may get me, you may not get me, but everybody here is working off of the same playbook. All right. Yeah. This is this what is we where expect. This is good systems come into play. That's right. This is what we expect, you know, and then you can throw in that joke. I, I, I'm handing it off to everybody, you know, tell them about the 80% rule and all that stuff. Number two is their mindset when it comes to taxes. What does taxes mean to them? Mm, that's good. Um, again, I kind of always put it all out there, you know, like, so that's why I said taxes to me, number one, is not to save money. Taxes is a reconciliation for the year. If you got a W-2, you're, you're an employee, hey, you pay taxes on the gross of what you make. It just flows all the way down. Maybe you have some itemized deductions or other income that may increase it or decrease it, but it just nets out. It's easy. You should be doing it on TurboTax. Don't come to me. If you come to me, no problem. We'll take you on, but <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a fee. All right. If you're a business owner, proper structure up front, accounting up front. How are you spending it all? What are you capturing? Making sure you kind of play with these rules about, you know, what is a business expense? You know, what is a reasonable business expense or business activity and so on and so forth. There's some rules and there's some, uh, there's some, uh, what do you call it? There's some allowances in there for you to uh, err one way or the other mm -hmm. because the IRA, not all IRS rules are just black and white. Right. Right. There are all these reasonable if and maybe and but, you know, and so on. Right. So what is that person's perspective on the taxes? Because your tax outcome is going to be definitely dependent on the way the other person who's going to prepare your taxes mm. thinks about your taxes. If you're on the same page that, hey, we want to write off everything under the sun, go and look for another child, do anything, no problem. All right. They'll help you with that. If that person, if that's what you want to accomplish. Right. Right. Because this is uh, our tax system is more of an honor based system. Yeah. Until you get audited. Right. And it's not so right. honorable. <laughs> right. All right. So you get to report what you want. And you're technically supposed to be doing it right the first time. So talk to them so this i had someone tell me that their cpa will give them options uh basically kind of a spectrum of okay the most conservative thing we could do here is this this is a little bit more risky the irs may or may not allow this if you choose that option just have some money saved away in case the irs decides they're not allowing this have you ever done that strategy or how, what do you think about that i would say this is the supporting documentation they expect, created and have it. We're not auditors. We're not meant to audit every single document that comes into us. However, if you want to push the boundary, I might know, I might be able to detect it. I may not be able to detect it, but I'll like, like I mentioned, we don't take box of re boxes right, of receipts. Right. I mean, we'll keep a copy, a scanned copy of your documents that you provide to us that we put into your system you know, uh, that we put into the tax return, but we can't take all of the supporting documents. We're not going to take every single line item receipts that you have in your accounting, right? So you have to keep a lot of stuff yourself for what, seven years or so. So we'll tell them you want to do that. Well, this is what's expected if you were to get audited. So make sure you have that, you know, update your accounting, and you know putting journal entries and so on and so forth and then you know resubmit the financials and we'll see you right especially if you're a business owner if there are changes that are made to the tax return it has to go back to the accounting because mm. the accounting has to match the tax returns there's no oh oops i forgot to update it two years ago no all right they're gonna match by the time we finalize your tax returns so you're going to go back and update it and then provide me a financial statement, which is all you provided me in the first place. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just you forgot to right. include whatever, right. whatever. Right. OK, that's fine. You know, do you have a receipt for that? Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. But is there anything else that people should take into account whenever they're looking for a tax professional? I was trying to think of 
more things but those two things are what i was thinking about but it's it's very hard for entrepreneurs to know who's a good cpa yeah, or not it is up front absolutely right? you can ask as many questions as you want uh my running joke is um even the person that came that had the worst grade in med school is still a doctor as long as they pass their the board exam same thing as a cpa as long as if you got a 75 on all sections of the cpa exam you're still a cpa mm. you know do you have to be smart to be a cpa no do you have to be a cpa to be smart no um but you can't really tell who's good and not good up front well, what, some things i've found that people don't realize is that there are a lot of CPAs out there that know nothing about taxes. Yeah. Or very little. We anyway. have clients that are CPAs, actually. So there you go. <laughs> and I and I spoke to a guy the other day at a networking meeting. He's like, my wife's a CPA, but she refuses to do our taxes. And she tries to tell me that she doesn't even know how to do them. Yeah. And I don't believe her. And They're I was auditors. like, actually? <laughs> I was yeah. like, there's a lot of CPAs that there many don't different, keep up with taxes. Yeah, there, there are many different, you know, um, Spe uh, specialties that you can go into as an mm -hmm. accountant right so you can be an auditor you can be a, a, a corporate accountant you can be cfo CF whatever it is you can go into finance yeah, yeah. different op options yeah. right so it's not like just because you're a cpa you must know taxes right right no. no and only one portion if i'm not mistaken of the cpa exam is tax is that correct they don't even call it tax they okay. call it regulation oh gotcha all right okay. so <laughs> there you go so it could be even more there wide other spectrum things. than that yeah, okay. there are other things i mean i took my cp exam a long time ago uh, but there there's more things in there that i believe than just taxes yeah yeah so it's it's a wide berth and yes so just because somebody has a cpa next to their name does not necessarily mean they keep up with tax regulations well i guess let me throw in a number three then get a referral mm, that's good you know um Yes, you know, a lot of people have good SEO. If you Google people, you'll find somebody. Right. But usually you get a recommendation. Yeah, that's good um, advice. That's where most business comes from, most right, business right. owners. It's going to be word of mouth and referrals. I actually right. had a CPA tell me he does not take anyone that is not from a referral. And he said, if somebody is googling cpa near me that is not a client i want you know if they're <laughs> if they're not savvy enough to find another colleague or business owner that has a good referral then that's not a client i want i was like hmm, that's an interesting perspective it, it, it is because you know finance is that sensitive topic whether family finance, business finance, or accounting, if you want to add that in there, it's it's a sensitive topic. And not everybody is comfortable discussing it with, you know, your network, mm. or you have gone beyond your network in the things that you are doing. So the referrals that they can give you, you already have vetted them mm. and know them to be found wanting, mm. right? So you, there, I think there's life is a little bit more nuanced than that so mm -hmm. we should be a, a little bit flexible, flexible on that because yeah especially that part about what if i started a business i'm you know with a group of people we just graduated college nobody has ever filed a tax return before b beyond the summer gigs w-2s that we always got you know and i jump into a business and i'm making you know right out of college a million dollars and everybody else is getting a job for xyz mm. w2 i can't ask them for i can't ask right, them for right, a cpa right. uh, like we all came up right, you know, right. <laughs> working at fast food and so on and so forth like right. how would they have the right well maybe friends of friends you know network of networks six degrees of separation they can find somebody but you might just you, you may not just be able to understand how to even introduce that right my business is doing all this i need a cpa that makes sense right i like that yeah. you offer a new perspective on that always, that's good always, i like that always we try i love it and it seems like what i'm most impressed with what you've said today it seems like you have good systems in place with your staff like even good though people. good people and good, good systems good so I, I really like that and i mean shout out to the team like, <laughs> um to, to to work for us you got to buy into the dream really that's that's what i call mm. it 
you know yeah you, yeah you, you just gotta buy into the dream there's there's no way you'll be able to survive if you don't buy into the dream mm -hmm. and take on that individual responsibility right because these are clients that i'm openly telling that i'm not doing your work mm -hmm. right so if you want to come here you're gonna have to trust somebody else yes you like the way i speak yes you i closed you and so on and so forth compared to somebody else closing you and getting the work in but then you never talk to me again unless you needed some consulting mm -hmm. and you can talk to me again so they have to now be able to take that baton that i've passed and be able to take care of it right we're of the mindset of taking care of the golden goose itself right mm. i know it's golden eggs but i call it the golden goose mm. right because we want to take care of the client that produces the eggs the eggs might as well they can be whatever to me I, it's it's okay right but the goose itself is golden to us and we understand how hard it is to be an entrepreneur we also understand how hard it is to get a new client in the door yeah right there are many people that do what we do we're not special right we try and say that we have some things that differentiate us from the next person and all that stuff but i mean you throw a rock out there they're like 20 cpas you'll hit all right and that's just cpas what about bookkeepers and tax preparers yeah, and yeah. tax shops and so on and so forth there's so many options out there for everyone same thing as as entrepreneurs yes i'd love for everybody to come to us but we really can't take everybody right out there. right so we understand how hard it is to be able to get that next customer that understands our structure, that understands our processes and pretty much wants to work with us. Well, and I would just tag on to that, that that's um, probably a good thing to look at, too, when someone's looking for a tax professional is how much is the tax professional vetting you? Yeah. Because if they're not asking any questions or really trying to make sure it's a good fit, then they're probably the kind of professional that's just accepting anyone and everyone yeah. and not conceptualizing that not everyone's going to be a good fit. Yeah. So it says a lot when someone actually takes the time to vet and say, okay, are we compatible? Definitely, especially by giving you their structure and processes, because then that's the only time you know if you can fall in line with that. Right. You know, it's almost like an assembly plant, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want a CPA that's just every day doing something new for every single different client, right? Because then again, going back to it, you can't scale. Right. Right. So exactly. there needs to be clean processes that people are following, that person's also following from the start to the finish. Absolutely. And rinse I love that. and repeat. Rinse and repeat. <laughs> All right. Speak accounting to me more. <laughs> I like now, that. No, I always say we try our best to yeah. accomplish those things. Absolutely. You know, this is like, you know, pie in the sky, like this is our north star of what we're trying yeah. to execute every single day when we step on the plate this is what we're doing you know this is the home run that we want to hit right but sometimes we hit singles oh yeah we all make mistakes we all, we're all human we strike out you know yeah it's and, okay yeah okay. i totally we understand learn that. and we grow every business owner has that same story you know no matter what business you're in you'll have those days that you do a great job you'll have those customers and clients and patients you know that you'll do a great job for it and you'll have some that probably didn't work out so well and mm. they'll leave a bad review and you know just mess up your five star ratings and all that <laughs> stuff right yep. he'll come all right so uh i always say let's all operate with some grace yes you as the entrepreneur us as the CPAs and bookkeepers and tax preparers. Absolutely. Let's all operate with some grace. Say there's an audience member that's hearing this right now and loving what you have to say. How would they know if they're a good fit for your firm specifically? And how would they find you? Ah, uh, um, so how they would find us, they can go to our website. Okay. Or, or just Google us. Um, and you'll be able to book an appointment and, you know, have that first. Spell your name out for those that just are listening and may not know how to how to Google you. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. So I'm a uh, uh, Nigerian background. I uh, grew up in Nigeria. I grew up kind of all over the place. But um, last name is O-M-O-T-A-Y-O. Omotayo. All right. Omotayocpa.com. 
and that's our website you can find us and love to talk to you you can call we'll schedule a meeting we'll do a 15 minute kick the tire type of call to figure out is it what, what are you looking for what are we looking for right and what what kind of things are you looking for in that meeting i'm looking for mindset mm. right uh, because that next client has to add value to us mm. and we have to be able to add value to them right um we are fortunate enough not to have to chase every single job that comes out there right so therefore we have to be a little bit careful about bringing on the next because i understand the limitations or the bandwidth limitations of our team yes we're growing and scaling but just because we get one new client doesn't mean we need to get a whole nother cpa all right mm -hmm. us entrepreneurs will know right. that cost right. Right. is kind of hefty so you have to manage who's this next person that's going to come on what are they bringing on do they really need us so i actually do recommend that many people that come to us that are doing their own taxes we probably aren't a good fit for you unless your situation completely changed mm -hmm. i had a new lead call and he said uh, me and my family we've done our taxes for years we bought one real estate property and we need a cpa i said I, I don't think you do, right? Because one, you're going to get a sticker shock on going from, uh, they were using TurboTax, from using TurboTax uh. to using a CPA, right? There's a massive sticker shock. But next, I think what you need more of, because you're able to do your taxes, right? You've done your taxes. You guys have W-2 jobs. You have, you know, stocks and so on and so forth. That's that's once you get into stocks, you know, reporting your stocks and all, it gets a little bit complicated. And you can do it on your own. You can easily do your own rental property one in the same tax software mm. if you have a good system. Ah. If you have a good process, because technically you're just going to be copying and pasting from your accounting system. Right. So I told them, you know what? I think what you need is for us to do what we call a structure consulting. Mm. Let's structure how you're going to operate the business, how you're going to record the business income and expenses, what kind of software you're going to use. We'll train you on that software. We'll hold your hand until you're comfortable with that. And then at the end of the year, you can keep going. You can keep going. Now, throughout the year, whenever you need us, we're there for you. Mm. Collate all your answers. Maybe it's once a month. Maybe it's once a quarter. Maybe it's once every six months you need us to kind of hey i'm looking at that next property i'm trying to do this i'm trying to do that they're asking for this they're asking for that let's have a meeting we'll strategize together we'll do this consulting and then you go off and run and you do your own right so i'm a firm believer on people can do it on their own mm. to start off i don't think right? i've ever heard a cpa say oh, that I, I, I push people <laughs> out the door or at least I, I try and delay them mm. right until because they need it until you need it because what some people fail to realize is we're all consumers right there is a value for working with certain types of people or mm. buying certain types of products yeah. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I'll say it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's looking at me, at least directly. Right? If you're coming to us, it's like you're coming into, let's just call it a Mercedes dealership. All right. That's where that's what mm -hmm. you're walking into. Right. It doesn't mean that you, hey, if you want to pay for Mercedes, no problem. Go ahead. That's fine. Right. But sometimes if you don't know how to drive yet, should you be driving a Mercedes mm. as, as your first as your first car? Hey, everybody has their opinion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? If you want to, no problem. Right? It's just you're going to yeah. have to pay for that pay Mercedes. For it. Yeah. All right. No, that makes sense. I used to say Lamborghini dealership, but I had to bring us down a little bit. <laughs> Because <laughs> we're not quite there yet. All right. So it's very important that they understand the value that they're going to be paying mm. for. It's going to be a sticker shock. We're going to be expensive than most other CPA firms that think they're our size yeah. Yeah. out there. Right. So we have to make sure that you understand that this is the value that we're providing. Right. And if you think it's not valuable, you should be doing it on your own. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Right. Not just getting somebody who's going to charge you the fee that you want to pay and then they do it. And maybe you'll end up complaining because, hey, you pay for what you get. Right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. This hey, has no been problem. very enlightening yes. and it's been great to get to know you better. Yes. Yes. And this has we been... probably have some bookkeeping clients that we can send your way that are looking for tax we, professionals. We would love so that. We'd love that. It would um, be great to continue working together. Hey, this has been tremendously fun. I always nice. like talking and, you know, sharing some of the well, knowledge of course, that we I'm have. fabulous. Right? <laughs> 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 no, this is this has been wonderful, and I know that we'll definitely work together because, um, you know, when we first met, we kind of gelled on some of the things that we were developing mm-hmm. for tax preparers and CPA firms and bookkeepers, you know, to be able to manage their practice, mm-hmm. you know, and talking about those things because um, I'm a big believer that it's most times software can can help at least cover up for some of the the gaps that we face when we're trying to manage our practice so we're trying to build something to cover that so that was awesome so definitely i know we'll be working together oh yeah i appreciate you for having us absolutely it's a pleasure to have you you've been awesome to talk to like i said at the beginning you're one of those people that when you start talking it's it's time to listen oh lord oh lord yes and we'll we'll be doing more of this Um, absolutely we also have our own show which we'll, we'll be posting this on to. Oh, very good. Right, Do you want to promote it? Uh, well, it's called Business Gist. All right. Nice. And it's a uh, video vlog that we post on YouTube. And I just share knowledge or have interviews with different entrepreneurs oh, very nice. and business owners, you know, just about different business topics or ideas that, you know, I get to meet and face every single day, really. That's so fantastic. Just share the knowledge and let's see where we can take it from there. It's Business Gist um, okay. and you can find us on Google. Okay, yeah. perfect. Well, All thank right. you so much. It's thank been an absolute much. pleasure to have yes. you today. Thank you very much. Don't forget, make sure to like, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and definitely share this with your families and friends. Take care.